My name is Charles Morrill. I'm a guide at Monticello, and I also make things. Previously, people spinning on spinning wheels, you would uh, move a spinning wheel with your foot or your hands, and you'd spin a single thread at a time. The spinning jenny, though, combined a series of spindles so that one person could spin 24, 40, or even more threads at a time. Jefferson had a spinning jenny. He had a, a number of them, actually. And this was his attempt to make cloth for his enslaved community. It's fascinating, isn't it, that in rural Virginia, you have this almost modern textile operation. We know, for example, that those who are enslaved are working in the fields, but it's easy, I think, to overlook that they are working also in factories. And we want to understand what those tasks were really like. A particular book I read on the spinning jenny estimated that there were just some four or five machines left in the world. So I'm using a, a wood of the period. Uh, I'm also attempting to use uh, the same technology of the period. We're now at Gaston and Wyatt here in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's a local millwork firm. So now we have a much larger workspace, which as you can see, we need. <laughs> So you have a real tour de force here of using local materials, of using anything that they can get to, to enter the modern world, and what we have is wood. So here we are uh, in the textile shop at Monticello, a spinning jenny for the first time in, say, 200 years. The conclusion of a lot of work and the beginning of understanding how this worked because this is not a simple piece of gear. One of the things about this machine that I have found in building it is it's complicated and it is subtle. So hats off here to some people I've never met, uh, Harriet Hemings, uh, Cresha Hearn, and so many others who, who learned this machine. It wasn't easy and it took a long time.